Welcome to Dwell in the Word. Today is Monday. It is May 23rd. Today we're going to be looking at Galatians 3 verses 1 through 9. But before we do that, being a Monday, we're going to say another prayer from lifting up our hearts. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that at this day a greater and viler impiety breaks forth than at any age, and your sacred truth is treated with derision by many of Satan's drudges. Grant that we may nevertheless constantly persevere in it and not hesitate to oppose the fury of all the ungodly, and relying on the power of your Spirit, contend with them until that truth you did once proclaim by your prophets and at length by your only begotten Son, and which was sealed by his blood, may attain its full authority, that as it proves to many the savor of eternal death, so it may also be a pledge to us of eternal salvation, until we shall be gathered into your kingdom at the coming of the same, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, as I said, we are going to be taking a look at Galatians 3, verses 1 through 9 today. Hear the word of the Lord. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplied the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness? Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. It's easy for us to read this part of Galatians and sort of pass over, I guess, for lack of a better word, the aggression with which Paul is coming after the church in Galatia here. Uh, it's easy for us to see the word foolish as uh, maybe being silly or something, but there is a lot of impact behind these words. I heard a pastor once say, we have to uh, sort of hear this as Paul saying, you stupid Galatians. Uh, what are you doing? Who has bewitched you? Who has fooled you? There is a great, great concern that Paul has here, and he is really driving home his point. This idea is that Jesus was portrayed to you as crucified. This was not your works. It was his work that we were focusing on when we proclaimed the gospel to you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit because you checked the boxes of keeping the law? Did you obey a command or did you do a particular uh, good work or a particular, particular ritual and you received the Spirit? Or was it because you heard the gospel and believed by faith? Which, which one was it, you Galatians? Are, are you so foolish that you now think that the Spirit began this work in you and, and now you're going to become holy by your work? That this wasn't about you to begin with, but now it's about you? Again, Paul is really driving home the point here, isn't he? He's letting them know that you're making this about you. But it's not about you. It's about what Christ has done for you. It's about what the Spirit has done in you to give you the gift of faith. And so he also says in, in verse 5, Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law? In other words, all the things that you have seen happen in your Christian community, was this a thing that was triggered by your ritual uh, adherence to some rules? Was it a good work you did? Did you did you do something nice to somebody and suddenly here come the miracles? Here comes the, the good works that, that God was doing among you? No, it came because you heard the gospel by faith. And we see Paul go here in verse 6 back to Abraham, just like he does in the book of Romans. We'll get there uh, at some point. We'll go through the book of Romans. Uh, just like we're going through Galatians now. Not sure why we haven't yet. Maybe uh, after we go back to the Old Testament after Galatians, we'll go to Romans. But anyway, we see here that Paul is bringing us to Abraham. And not only is this the right thing to do because Abraham is seen as the man of faith and because 
Uh, that's the example we have in the Old Testament. But remember who was given the command of circumcision? Was it, uh, it well, it was Abraham. If we are using him as the example of faith here, then would circumcision be necessary? Um, does Genesis say, and Abraham was circumcised and it was credited him as righteousness? Or does it say he believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness? We know which one it says, right? And that's Paul's point. It is faith, faith in Christ and his work on our behalf that saves us, that, that the Holy Spirit comes to us and gives us this gift to believe this, that we are saved. And so Paul not only uses this uh, to help us understand that circumcision isn't something that triggers salvation, but he, he goes even further to help us understand that the, the Gentiles are reached because of faith, and Abraham was told this in advance. Notice what Paul does here. He's foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. Now, we don't really think about that. We think about that as, hey, all the nations, a bunch of people. We see this as, as a number maybe to be achieved or an amazing accomplishment, perhaps. But the point of all nations here is an ethnic thing. It means all the people, not just the Jews, not just the Hebrew people. This is how faith comes to the people of God, that this is this faith that we have in Christ is multiplied not just to the Hebrew people, but to the Gentiles. And we believe. We believe because God has come to us. It is not the works that we do. It's not what we have done, but what God in Christ has done for us and the gift of faith that we receive from the Spirit. And so we are blessed, Paul says, along with Abraham, just as he was the man of faith, the one who was circumcised, who received the command to be circumcised, that wasn't what made him righteous. It was faith. He has believed God. And so right along with the man of faith, the Hebrew of Hebrews, just like Paul was, right? We find that Abraham is defined by his faith, not his works. He's defined by his faith, not his circumcision. And so Paul doesn't want these people in Galatia to believe that somehow they're being perfected or that they're being saved by circumcision. Instead, he wants them to trust in the faith that they have in Christ alone. Now, for us, this is quite a bit different. We are not looking to circumcision uh, for how we are perfected. We're looking to other works, right? We're, we're looking to our own ability to keep the law or do a particular thing. What we need to do is we need to remember that we were not brought to faith by our works, so we're not going to be perfected that way either. If we want to be holy, we need to continue to hear the word. We need to continue to trust the Spirit and live our lives in response to what God has done. Not thinking that we can somehow earn God's favor, but instead trusting that we have God's favor because of what Christ has done for us. So may we trust in that alone and not think that our works are meriting anything for us, but may we trust in the work of Jesus that has merited righteousness for us. May we believe that by faith just as Abraham did. Let's close up with a word of prayer. Merciful God, we praise you, for we know it's you that brought about a good work in us by bringing us to faith in Jesus. For we know that we did not receive the Spirit by the works of the law, but by hearing with faith. Because of this truth, we know that it's your Spirit's continued work in us that will perfect us, not our own works. Grant that we would desire to continue hearing your word and that our trust in the Holy Spirit would grow more each day. Today, we bring our prayers for your church around the world. We pray we would be united through the message of the cross, and that we would be reminded that we are a people brought together not by any earthly markers, but instead, we are a people from every tribe, tongue, and nation that's united in what Jesus has done for us in his death, resurrection, and ascension. We praise you, for you are our helper and the one who upholds our lives, we offer the sacrifice of our lives to you and give thanks to your holy name. You have delivered us from every trouble, for you are the God who saves his people. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Okay, we are through chapter 3, verse 9. We'll pick up with Galatians 3, verse 10 on Wednesday. See you then.